I wonder. Oh, that's so much worse. Old me versus new me. Rendering line art versus color. How my mentor lost my portfolio. My name is Eric Canetti. You're watching Redraw. And today I'm drawing Big Barda. So full disclosure, I'd started this image originally way back in 2010. No, uh, it's not anything new. I just found it in one of my old files. As a matter of fact, I'd already started laying down the base color for it, basically the flats, so it'd be much easier for me to color in Photoshop. And that's the other thing. I had started the color in Photoshop and ported it over to my current coloring app of choice, Procreate. But if you think about it, uh, and the name of my YouTube channel, Redraw, it's very on brand. To be honest, it's my very um, convenient and cheating way of coming up with content for this channel without having to start from scratch. So, there you go. Cheating right from the start. I'll tell you the truth. I didn't understand Jack Kirby when I first saw his artwork. Um, it didn't happen until much later, and even then it took some convincing. There were a lot of people whom I worked with at Warner Brothers Animation from... You know, Bruce Tim and Glenn Murakami and Dave Johnson and all those guys who somehow infused their work with uh, a little bit, if not wholeheartedly, the spirit of Jack Kirby's work. The artist whose work spoke to me more than Jack Kirby, who I really, uh, uh, really took a lot of influence from, was Mobius. It wasn't until later, until I saw... Uh, or at least my, my periphery opened up and I started to understand Jack Ker Kirby's work and how dynamic and explosive and really expressive it was that I started infusing into my work. And that relates to this image because Big Barda and the New Gods are uh, his creations for uh, DC Comics. And it's interesting now to think about how I didn't have an initial appreciation for his work and you can take a look at my current body of work uh, on my uh, on my social media there, and you can definitely tell that I'm taking so much for I'm taking so much from Jack Kirby that I probably owe his estate a ton of money. Doing an exercise like this, um, where I go back and re-render or redraw an older image, this one in specific, like I said, is about what ten years uh, ten years old. It's a pretty interesting challenge because I have to put myself into the mental headspace that I was in back then. Transferring myself to the 10 years younger version of me, like I said, is challenging because there's some things that I do now or that I did then that I don't do now. So there's things by way of design like the belt or the armbands that I questioned why I did them in that fashion because they were really counterintuitive to helping the viewer understand volume, shape, and form of the, of the main character. So I had to really think about how to update that now so it made more sense rather than just mindlessly rendering it because it's what I did from back in the day. And I run into that a lot throughout this image where I don't think I was paying attention so much to the actual form and shape itself. I was just sort of preoccupied with the variation of line weight and how pretty the line was or how pretty the contour line was, um, but not really... Um, uh, being very deliberate about how those lines help to identify shape, volume, and form. Looking back in my career, um, and especially doing something like this where I go back 10 years and touch up my old work, it has a tendency to bring up a lot of nostalgia. I mentioned earlier that I worked in the animation industry and Warner Brothers Animation in specific, working on Teen Titans and Justice League and whatever else came down the path of uh, production from Warner Brothers. But um, yeah, it makes me reflect on the amazing mentors that I've had the opportunity of working alongside of guys who are so much more um, accomplished and so much more well-regarded uh, for their body of work in the industry that they work on. I mentioned earlier uh, guys like Bruce Tim and Glenn Murakami and Dave Johnson and those guys are just giants to me. So it was such a 
uh, I am so humbled that I've had uh, my career guided by um, their body of work indirectly, indirectly. So thank you to everyone who's helped me out. And thank you to those gentlemen for um, uh, setting the bar. As I'm rendering or re-rendering this image, can I tell you how much younger version of me seemingly didn't give a damn? This guy was just all over the place. Anyway, before I forget, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell for updates on videos. I think I'm going to be doing them on Sundays now. I think that's the new cadence. And if you haven't already done so, please follow me on my social media. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram under at Eric Canetti. Um, yeah, so younger version of me didn't give a damn. He was just drawing and having fun and making all sorts of stupid mistakes, but at the very least, he was enjoying himself, which I think I can take a good cue and lesson from. Sometimes I get so caught up in the process and how things work and how light reflects and how does this read as a volume and a shape and blah, 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 that I get uh, so deep into that, I forget to have fun drawing. Young version of me, I think he was not thinking enough. I think he was doing things that didn't make a lot of sense. Um, but you could tell that all of that energy went into the actual drawing itself. And there's something to be said about that. Good job, younger me. Because the image was never originally intended for color, it was an interesting exercise to go back in there and understand what um, those shadows meant for its black and white presentation versus how much I needed to amend it now that I'm rendering it with color. Um, there are areas here that I knew for sure needed to be sort of rethought, like the shadow that's falling off of Mr. Miracle's nose there, um, how much of his face would fall into shadow. There are things in there like the sheen on Big Bart's hair that made sense in black and white, but not necessarily um, uh, in color, because if you think about how light would strike that sheen, it probably wouldn't be uh, that intense. So, like I said, I would uh, I would have to rethink it now that I'm painting it. Um, yeah, it's sort of weird, the decision making that you make when you know it's only going to be in black and white and opting for a version of clarity um, uh, in that medium and then the decisions that you make that you would have to go through now that it's in color and how you opt for clarity um, using that technique. You know, it's it's really weird. So that was that was kind of fun trying to decipher and, and redo all of that. I had mentioned Dave Johnson earlier and I'd like to give him a big thank you uh, for all the amazing things that he's helped um, in getting my career jump-started in the comic book industry. I'll tell a quick story as an aside as we we're getting closer to the end of this video, but I remember visiting him at, um, at a very early San Diego Comic-Con, a version of it is, that isn't the juggernaut that it's become now, but um, it was the first time that I had prepared a professional portfolio for review. Dave Johnson was a big influence on me back in the day when he was working on Super Patriot and Red Sun. I went and found him in Artist Alley and tried to get a portfolio review from him. His, uh, he was very encouraging, but also very helpful in uh, pointing out a couple of things that I had um, I needed to work on for next time. Um, back then, you would leave copies of your portfolio to editors, and I had enough extras so that I left one with Dave, and that was a big deal for me. I think that was on a Thursday that I'd showed him my portfolio. By Saturday's time, I visited him again in Artist Alley, um, and he asked me for another copy of, the, of my uh, portfolio. I had a high regard for the guy up in the back of my head. I thought, man, what a jerk. He lost my portfolio already. Uh, but that wasn't the case at all. Dave had spent a good portion of his weekend tearing out um, pages from my portfolio that had my contact information on them and was giving them to potential editors that could give me work. And that's the kind of guy that Dave is. Really, really good dude, an amazing mentor to me, and uh, I want to thank him for believing in my work enough so that uh, he would stick his neck out and um, look out for me. So, thanks, Dave. 
when I rediscovered this file, it already had that um, base red color um, as a quote unquote underpainting. And that really um, helped this thing to congeal as far as color harmony wise. I often paint with my brush turned down, um, uh, the opacity of my brush turned down, something like 80 to 85 percent, at least initially. Um, letting some of that base, uh, that foundation color show through. It's an old painting technique, but there's a way to simulate it using uh, digital work, and that's what happened here. So some of that red, um, conceptually, is still peeking through uh, the image, which was uh, difficult enough because there's so many primary colors on here. I needed as much help as I could to, like I said, to help harmonize the, the piece as a whole. The challenge was desaturating just the right amount of those primary colors so that there is the concept of depth. I know there's uh, areas here that I could have done a much better job uh, pushing forward uh, or receding further back. There could have been a little bit more uh, contrast to where her face is, but this was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to thank old me for setting all of this work up. I want to thank all of my mentors for helping me out and helping out my career. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sitting through the entire video and I'll see you on the next one.